Hey guys and gals, this is your Average Joe Consumer here again with another review as promised. This review is going to be on the Magic Flight Orbiter, which is, for those who don't know, a water bubbler accessory for your Magic Flight launch box. Let's jump into it. The Magic Flight Orbiter is much smaller than I expected. Even when watching videos and seeing pictures, I was still surprised by just how small and portable this device is. With a height of just over 4 inches and 4.5 inches distance from the mouthpiece to the curved metal support arms, it is indeed small or as my girlfriend put it, cute, quote unquote. I had no trouble at all packing this into my cycle pack to take to a friend's house or when I was leaving on a vacation trip. That being said, the majority of people buying a water accessory like this are probably going to be using it at home for the most part. The Orbiter comes with two whips, a long one that you can connect to the mouthpiece to inhale from, and a shorter one to connect to the top of the Orbiter to your launch box. The longest whip is 27 inches long, and the shorter one is 18 inches long. Both have glass ends that are encased in whichever wood you order, in my case it was maple, the only wood available at the time. On the other end of the whips is are acrylic stems for your mouth and for your launch box hole. The acrylic stems were something of a shock to me. At $80, I would have expected glass pieces similar to what you get when you buy your launch box. It's not that acrylic stems are bad, it just feels lower quality. On top of that, the stems that connect to my launch box are thicker than my glass stem. As a result, it has widened the insert hole to the mouthpiece, making my glass stem a bit more loose when I travel than it did before. That being said, it's a smaller complaint, and I'm glad to see glass inserts for a glass-on-glass -glass contact with the Orbiter. The whips themselves tend to fight you when you curl them up, but don't leave any creases when you unravel them. The Orbiter itself is a beautiful thing to see in person. The wood base's grain circles perfectly around the glass bowl that rests inside of it. The, what I assume is bronze, support arms give it a classy look, as well as making it really easy to slide the retention sleeve down to take the glass off the base. Because the glass bowl itself is so small, it takes very little water to fill it up to an optimum level, which also aids in portability. By now you're probably saying, that's all fine and dandy, but what is it like to take a hit? The answer is a little tricky. After all the reviews I've read about the Orbiter, I expected to take a hit and feel almost nothing. I never had any real issues with the heat from my launch box, but it did tickle the back of my throat ever so often. When I took my first hit, I realized that I could still feel the heat a bit. Though it was better than using just my launch box, the heat is still there. Is that a bad thing? Not for me. I think though that this is because the Orbiter allows for a much smoother pool of air. As a result, I get much denser and longer hits off my Orbiter than I would if I just used my launch box. I'm able to pull a much slower draw and able to build up much more vapor before fully inhaling it. As a testament to how much denser you can get your hits with the Orbiter, I brought it over to my friend's apartment. He's tried my launch box before and always complains that it's too harsh on his lungs and throat and doesn't get him high. With supervision, I had him take two hits and a while later he said he could actually feel high. This was a great accomplishment in my book. But speaking of sharing with friends, the Orbiter is a double-edged sword. I found it is much less tense atmosphere when you can simply hand the whip to your friend while you power the launch box yourself. If your friend isn't drawing fast enough, you can toggle the battery as needed. This is this resulted in my friends getting denser hits and me not having to hover over them as much worrying about combustion. Now I said double-edged sword because, let's face it, when people are vaping they don't fully think things through sometimes. I myself accidentally had my finger catch on one of the whips when I was turning around and almost yanked my orbit off the table. A week later, my girlfriend forgot to let go when she was done with her hit and almost pulled it off as well. After I'm done taking a hit now, I take off all the whips and set them aside. If you're vaping for stealth, then this might not be the accessory for you. Building up denser hits will get you more high, but it also creates more of a lasting aroma. While after waking up after a night of vaping, my room would still smell a bit of stale from the vapor. The good news is unlike smoke, airing out my room with an open window for an hour seems to solve the problem. If you live in a cold environment though, this isn't always an ideal situation, so you might want to consider blowing out through a filter or using a launch box just by itself. Storage is also key. The Orbiter and the whips really get off a strong smell after a couple of uses. 
Yes, you can clean them to keep them from smelling, but you also lose the buildup of honey that you can harvest later. Durability is where I'm not so sure about this product. As a disclaimer, when I got my Orber, I noticed that some parts of the surface were not fully sanded smooth. I don't know if this was an intent, if this was intentional, and just part of the company's standards, or if it passed inspection too soon. A couple of days later, a drop of water got on my wood and instantly stained it. I was surprised how easily it stained, but then found a blog from blog posting from Magic Flight's website that said a week later after I bought mine that they switched from a pure mineral oil finish to a beeswax finish for better protection. As a result, I lightly sanded the stain and then applied my own beeswax and the stain disappeared. Due to rapid change in building practices around the time I purchased, I have no clue what the best durability practices are now, but I'll go on the safe side and say that it's best to avoid any contact of the wood with water or it will result in a very obvious stain. Alright, well, my conclusion is this. The Orbiter is a fantastic little bubbler that can get you denser hits, is beautiful to look at, and easy to transport. At $80, $95 including shipping and tax, it's not cheap. At the time of my purchase, I had justified the cost by accepting that the warranty protected my product for life. With the warranty on the glass now over, it's a little more up in the air. If you already have a glass, then I would just invest in a whip attachment. If not, this little guy is optimized for the best possible hits on your launch box. Anyone that loves Magic Flight, their customer service, and their craftsmanship will love this product and be a staple in their collection. For those looking for a similar experience, they'll probably gravitate to the UFO for its cheaper price and classable transportation volume. Do I love my Orber? Yes. Yes, I do. Am I disappointed that I bought it a week before they announced my preferred cherry and walnut options? Yes. Yes, I am. That being said, after applying my beeswax finish, it does look better than it did out of the box. So, I hope this video review helped people on the fence about the Orbiter. Please feel free to leave me any questions or subscribe for more reviews of the coming future. I'll be sure to look out for them and answer them as soon as possible. Whatever.